These days, the latest in high-speed bus interfaces is PCIe or PCI Express. There's a different bus type called PCI-X. You really don't see that much in the PC environment these days. This isn't really the, what we have traditionally seen with a bus. You had, for instance, these widths we were talking about. And the wider the 64-bit bus and the 32-bit bus, the wider the bus, the more data you would have. Well, with PCI Express, you don't have that anymore. You have something called a unidirectional serial lane. And as I mentioned before, these lanes of data, you would have a by one, by two, by four, by eight, by 16, by 32. The more lanes of traffic you set up, the more data you would be able to transfer. You didn't send everything down that connection in the, the wider it got. We were running out of real estate, essentially. Each lane in this PCI Express 1.1 allow 250 megabytes per second in each direction in this serial connection. So you're able to get on a by 32 connection up to eight gigabytes per second going in each direction. The new format of PCI Express came out 2.0 and 2.1, which just doubled those numbers. So a huge amount of throughput. This is what we've needed for our high-speed graphics interfaces and some of these high-speed devices we put in our environment. There is a PCI Express 3.0, not out quite yet when we've made this video, but you can see huge amounts of throughput. When you can get 16 gigabytes per second transferred through a system with PCI Express 2.0 and 2.1, you're really moving quite a bit of traffic through your system. You've got this PCI Express, you've got this by one. So you've got one lane going up and one lane coming back. So it's communicating unidirectionally. One side is going one direction, one side's going the other. If we need a, a bigger amount of throughput, we would just add more slots. So by doing that, we simply add three more lanes. Now I've got a by four. I've got a PCI Express by four that's now transferring four times as much data. So it was very easy to expand the capabilities of PCI Express. And we'll even see this if we look at our motherboards. You'll see a one by slot. Here's a little 1x. Uh, you'll see the 16 by slot. It's got 16. It's much bigger. And here's some of the traditional PCI. So the PCI Express a little bit bigger. And you can see we're going to transfer a lot more traffic that way versus perhaps a, a one by slot. What's interesting about this is if you only need one lane, then you can create an interface card with a very, very small interface on it. For instance, this is a serial type card that is a PCI Express 16 port RS-232 card. Doesn't require a lot of throughput, so you can get away with just having this tiny little interface at the end of the card. Uh, video cards that need more throughput would have a larger number of of interfaces at the bottom. It's a wider set of interfaces that plug into, for instance, the 16 lane slot, for instance. So you'll run into that quite a bit whenever you're looking at PCI Express. It'll have different sizes, and that's why. There's a couple of other slots that are important to keep in mind for the A-plus exam. You don't really see these much on traditional motherboards these days, on the, the most modern motherboards. But you see on some of the older legacy systems. At one time, we didn't have a, a interface on our motherboard for the network. We didn't have interfaces on our motherboard for a modem. And to be able to get around and standardize on interfaces directly on the motherboard, we created something like this called an AMR bus. This is an audio modem riser. And this is a picture of what an AMR might look like. It was a very specialized expansion slot. And it was really designed to plug in an audio or a modem type hardware into a very standardized format. So we didn't have to have something that was taking up a full slot that we could have used for something else in our motherboard. Another type of riser that came right after that is called a CNR, a communications and networking riser. We realized we needed something that supported more than just audio and modems. We needed network connectivity as well. And so we were able to support that in this, uh, again, a tiny little slot here for the CNR, but it still provided us with a lot of uh, flexibility, a lot of standardization to be able to plug into and be able to just immediately stick a network connection right into a device. Ultimately, both those uh, AMRs and CNRs were phased out pretty quickly, relatively speaking, because we were able to put all of that right on the motherboard and really didn't need these standardized slots in our systems anymore. If you're on a laptop, you obviously don't even have the choice. There's no way to get into your machine. It won't fit a full-size PCI card or PCI Express card in there. So we needed a specialized set of expansion cards just for laptops. So we came up with the PCMCIA. This is a Personal Computer Memory Card International Association. And they created something called the PC card. And this PC card, there were different types. There's a type 1, a type 2, a type 3, and ultimately a card bus type card. And they were different sizes and allowed for different buses and different 
different speeds. If you looked at the cards themselves, right on the end of the card, they all look to be a similar size, but there were these little slots at the end, these little keyings at the end. And depending on the type of keying you had, really showed the type of card that it was. And so you couldn't plug in a card to a laptop that wouldn't support that card type because it wasn't keyed properly. It wouldn't allow that card to go in there. So as you know when you slid in the laptop and that card wouldn't fit, mm, that laptop's not going to support card bus. Or that laptop needs a different kind of PCMCIA card to be able to support it inside of that device. The latest types of interface cards for laptops are called Express Cards. There's two primary kinds. There's an Express Card 34 and an Express Card 54. And that's talking about the width of this device, 34 millimeters and 54 millimeters on this device. And that's what we're finding on our latest types. These are really higher speed. They're really designed as a type of PCI interface that fits into a card slot right on a, a laptop. And you'll notice what's nice on these 34 millimeter cards, they're much smaller than the older PCMCIA PC card or the card bus cards that we were traditionally used to dealing with. And so it took up a lot less real estate on a laptop. And for laptop and portable devices, that's pretty important. We've gone through a lot about these bus architectures on our computers. Let's see what we can remember on these expansion slots. Which bus architecture supports speeds up to 16 gigabytes per second? Well, that had to be one of the more recent types of interfaces. And that is indeed the PCI Express version 2.0 and later supported those higher speeds. Which bus architecture was designed specifically for video? This came out in the Pentium 3 time frame, somewhere around there. And it was called the Accelerated Graphics Port. Don't see many of those anymore, but really useful video format when it was available. And what is a single communications path called in PCI Express? Well, just like we're driving down the road, that would be a lane of communication. Well, that covers what we needed to know with bus architectures and expansion slots. We've gone through the PCI, the AGP, the PCI Express our AMR, CNR, and finally for laptops and portable devices, what we would think about with PCMCIA. If you'd like to watch any of our a videos, it's absolutely free. Come to our website, participate in our message boards, much more. we got a lot there. You can find it all at freeaplus.com.